A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Tomasic Polytechnic School of Design, welcome to our early admission exercise webinar, breakout and sharing session. My name is Ernest Paul, and I'm the Assistant Director at TP School of Design. And I'll be presenting on behalf of the school today. To the rest of the audience who are tuning in, we hope you will find this sharing session to be fruitful and engaging. After the sharing, there will be a Q&A session where we hope to address some of your questions today. So we are going to be using the pigeonhole tool. So have your handphone or internet browser ready to scan the QR code in the next slide. We hope to answer them at the Q&A session later. Next, but you can start asking those questions now. Feel free to adjust your YouTube playback size to go to uh, theater mode, or you can go to full screen for a better experience. I'll give you a few seconds to scan the QR code, and then we'll get on with the rest of the presentation. Right, so um, today's presentation, we start with a quotation from somebody who is related to a very famous person, John Lennon. In fact, it was John Lennon's sister, Mimi Smith. And this is what she said, the guitar's all very well, John, but you'll never make a living out of it, which is an interesting thing for the sister of, of John Lennon to say considering the success that we know he had later on in life. This will become more significant later on in our presentation because what we are trying to do is to get you to think about doing what you love, what you're passionate about, and in our particular case, to actually do design. A little bit about our school. Um, we have been around for quite a while. In fact, we started in 1969 as Baharudin Institute and moved to Tamasic uh, campus in 1990. So over the years, we've had quite a bit of time to get uh, our ideas about design correct and to provide a program that is really uh, effective and uh, relevant to industry. Currently, we have 1,174 students uh, in school enrolled. Of course, it's the pandemic, so most of them are working from home. 69 staff actually help to make the school a good place for learning. Over the years, we've had 7,200 plus graduates, and they are all over, all right? We are really proud to say that we have more than 1,000 awards. And why are awards important? Because it's our way of benchmarking ourselves against the best, not just locally, but in the world. How do we teach? How do we learn? Well, all our programs are 100% project base. So you will rarely come across an exam when you do design at TP. What makes a designer? Let's have a look at some of the qualities that make up a designer. Well, some of the key qualities are really personal characteristics. Confidence, innovative, versatile, adventurous, being an agile thinker, these are really important qualities in terms of personality. But we also need students to be idea-driven, to be curious, right? To be courageous and resilient. 
because the program that we have is actually something that requires you to be hardworking because uh, we do give you the technical skills. We teach the kind of knowledge you need to become a good designer, but it really is up to you to actually apply these and become a great designer. Part of those skills and characteristics are some uh, elements which have become really important in the last few years. One is being digitally savvy. Now, you don't have to be a computer whiz, but over the three years, you will be exposed to many different elements which uh, enhance your ability to work in a digital way. And worry not, a lot of the programs are very collaborative. So you will get a chance to work with your group mates and your classmates, and sometimes even with people from industry, which is a strong part of our program. A lot of the work is interdisciplinary. Yes, you may belong to one diploma or another, but you will always find opportunity to work not just across diplomas, but also across the polytechnic. Well, some things about our school. We are 100% design. We are the most comprehensive design school in Singapore. I can say that without any hesitation. We are the first and still the only design school dedicated to design studies. Our approach is collaborative, interdisciplinary, and most interestingly, we work in a studio environment. Now you might ask, why is that special? Well, it's unlike working in an office. A, a studio actually is a very creative, uh, energizing place to work. So when you come to design school, you will find that not only do you work in a very uh, exciting, innovative environment with uh, interesting creative people, but you will also be working in a collaborative, multidisciplinary way. Let's start with looking at some of our diplomas that we have on offer. Firstly, apparel design and merchandising. It's not just about fashion. It's really a lot about the business of fashion and its ecosystem. Essentially, the whole cycle of producing clothes, apparel, is uh, under this program, which includes specializing in retail merchandising as well as fashion merchandising, if you so choose to. A lot of the program now involves marketing strategies, especially in new media and e-commerce, which seems to be the way that this industry is growing. But you all also have opportunity to work on brick and mortar retail projects as well. Next, we have communication design. The first year fundamentals are about building up your graphic design competency. Essentially, these are core skills for all communication designers. You can choose to specialize in branding, integrated communication, or image design. It is a very popular program. Of course, there's digital film and television, which helps people develop storytelling skills and creative script writing skills. Students learn to pitch film ideas to real investors, and they also learn the business of filmmaking, which is very extensive. Essentially, students will get to specialize in producing and directing or production and technical work. Interior architecture and design is another program that we have on offer. And a lot of the work that is done in interior architecture design is about the real world. It's about placemaking and the little things that make up uh, the value of a space. And what you will find is that this program is mentored by some leading designers and architects. So there is no shortfall in terms of experience and knowledge. Another program that we have is product and industrial design. 
essentially these days when we talk about product and industrial design, we're talking about experience design, usability, design for human interaction, as well as going beyond uh, the traditional industries that we often associate with product and industrial design, like banking, healthcare, and hospitality. We also have the Beyond Design Center, which gives students exposure to collaborative work. Collaborative design is a powerful tool that pushes the boundary of conventional design thinking. As you can see from the images, the projects tend to be beyond the normal skill level that is required, which is why collaboration is a key element of working in the Beyond Design Center. So essentially, they, those are our programs. But what about other elements of living, working, and studying in design school? Firstly, there is a very important element, which is about having fun. We'd like to welcome you to our world. And in our world, there are uncommon destinies, people coming from all backgrounds. We start with the common beginning, which is really orientation, where everybody gets on board to the design school way of doing things, with the aim of possibilities realized because by the end of your diploma, some of those possibilities will become reality. Essentially, the design school is known for the design spirit. Starting from the first day you walk in, you will get to meet your fellow designers, friends in the course, as well as your lecturers and tutors. They are all fueled by passion. In fact, a lot of the programs in design school, as they are in TP, are actually student-run. And you will get an opportunity to meet, interact, and mingle with some of our most creative young minds. There are no dull days in uh, TP design school. Every day is something new, something unique, something that forces you to think a little bit more and maybe even stretch a little bit. You might hear about crits from your friends who are already in the polytechnic and this is our way of assessment. We don't really have exams. Essentially what uh, people do is present their ideas, their work, and you can see some of the presentations uh, happening below there. There are public events and field trips talks by industry experts and designers, mentorship programs, exhibitions to take place, craft sessions, and a lot of experiential learning. Design school really is about hands-on learning. As you can see from the images on your screen now, the work stretches from uh, small, uh, 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 small to big things. Right, So a lot of the work is creative, a lot of the work is um, um, colorful, and uh, you will have an opportunity to participate in creating some really interesting, unique public projects as well. The key event in the calendar of uh, the School of Design is the design show. And the design show before the pandemic was face-to-face -face and really quite an exciting event, not just for parents and students, but also for industry guests to see what was happening with the young people who are undertaking their journey in design. Uh, the work that students produce is on show. Final year projects, this is the chance for industry people to have a look to see who are the bright young minds who are coming out of the Masik Poly School of Design. Also, one of the things that we emphasize is getting known. And for that, we take a lot of pride in participating in competitions and exhibitions all around the world. A good example is the British TNAD, which is for advertising students. And we're very proud to say that 
our designers have actually achieved the Yellow Pencil Award uh, for uh, two years in a row, right? Including the Graphite Pencil in 2017. We are also gold medal winners in the World Skills Competition, as well as many other international competitions as well. Locally, we are really well known for being the institution of the year at the Crowbar Awards, and this is no mean feat. We have consistently been institution of the year in 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020. And we are proud of the students who participated and helped us achieve this award. So we are the institution which, I guess you could say we topped the table in the 2020 results. As you can see, we had 22 gold medals, 23 silver, 12 bronze, and 10 other finalists, which accounts for our winning the institution of the year. Our students and graduates stand among giants. We have some of the best people who come to TP to design school to help us with our program. At the end of the third year, students are examined for their final year product, for their final year project. And we have external examiners who actually come from all over the world, like uh, from Savannah College of Art, from the Beijing Film Academy, and from University of New South Wales in Australia. We also have very extensive network of industry partners. Like, for example, the Singapore Design Council is a very strong supporter of our program. Not only that, we also have uh, projects which we have done and are ongoing with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, with uh, Singapore Discovery Center, and Tri Tribal DDB Worldwide, who is a very important partner for the design school. For example, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we actually worked with them to, uh, to produce the branding and interior design for the Singapore Cooperation Centers in Myanmar, Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam. Not only that, we also helped them with illustrations and photo exhibitions on uh, ASEAN Day and at the ASEAN Summit in 2017, sorry, 2018. One of the key elements of our program is working with industry and we have the Equator Center. It is TP's award-winning first enterprise in residence. What does that really mean? Well, we have tribal DDB Oh, sorry, uh, DDB Worldwide actually set up and work with our students on TP campus. Now, not just design students, but also students from business school and other schools in TP get to work on real client briefs. So you can imagine how much of a real world experience being in design school in TP is. We are amongst newsmakers and industry leaders. Our graduates are actually out there making a name for themselves and for our school. We are very proud to say that we have five Design President Award winners, right? Which is quite an achievement. Some of the people that really are getting a reputation for themselves are now actually actually leading industry. People like Royston Tan, who is a local filmmaker, or Jeff Chong, who is president of Tribal DDB Asia. I'm very proud to say that we have Yasa Surapman, who is a graduate who went from a diploma to Yale master's program. That's quite an achievement. So, we see design as a catalyst, right? Design is important to industry as much as society. Design skills are central to innovation and we are an innovation-driven economy. Design is a high-value growth area. 
when design is added to any industry, we can see a percentage of growth of that industry directly resulting from the input of design. Design is in the non-design sector as well, which might surprise a few people because banks, uh, hospitals, and many other industries look to design as a source of innovation and problem solving. Not only that, design is digital and interdisciplinary. It covers a broad range of domains and knowledge. So in an ideas-driven economy, essentially, those who can overcome the existing problems help to enable economic and social innovation, right? And design drives innovation by creating new value and markets, as well as offering a human-centered approach to check, tackling social problems and issues. Designers go everywhere, and this is something that we're really proud of. Our students are in all sorts of industries. Many of them have done really well for them themselves, not just as designers, but in other areas as well. Um, we obviously have uh, people like Chia Ying, who is the head of product at Love Bonito, a fashion brand which is quite familiar to Singaporeans. Not only that, we have people who have gone into the civil service, uh, like the Singapore Civil Defense, and are in the Singapore Art Museum. So the range of opportunities available is really quite wide. There is a strong demand for people who have design training and are able to actually apply that iterative critical thinking process to whatever work that they are doing. And obviously, we believe design is very important and not just important to be left to designers. In terms of the workforce, our government intends for the workforce to have at least design sensibilities by 2025. This is the ability to tap into that intuition to make sense of our surroundings, to communicate ideas and solutions that are relatable to others. This can transform businesses and create a better living environment, not just for Singaporeans. Designers are going places. So essentially, if you join our school and the pandemic allows, get your passports ready because we are known for organizing really interesting overseas study trips. Students have actually in the past gone on internships as far away as China and Mexico and exchange programs. They participate in international work workshops and regional community programs as well. Of course, currently, this is not really very possible, but there are students who are, of course, working in a digital mode and yet in an international uh, way when they take up their internship. Some of you may have questions about life after a diploma in education, and let me assure you that there are great further opportunities for further education. Um, some of the schools that you see on the name here will accept our students readily, right? And some into uh, uh, second year after some cross crediting. So if you look and see, the major universities in, Singapore's, uh, in Singapore actually take our students, including NTU, NUS, and SUTD. Overseas, we have students who have gone to Central St. Martins, Royal College of Art in UK. They've gone to the Domus Academy in Italy, as well as the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. So the opportunities to continue your learning journey is greatly available once you leave our school. So essentially, there are many pathways 
that you can proceed and progress. All right. So today our main purpose is getting you up to date with the necessary information for you to make your choice with regards to the early admission exercise. Keeping in mind that we have two other programs. One is the Poly Foundation program and the other is the joint admission exercise, which is uh, after the O-level results. Now, um, if you have any questions at this stage, what I would like you to do is actually scan the QR code here and enter the passcode EAE2021 to actually put in your questions. All right? Feel free to type in the comment section after you log in and uh, clarify any questions that you might have. So I will take your questions now. So. One of the questions with the highest vote is from uh, a Mrs. Lim. And I assume Mrs. Lim is a parent. What are the portfolios? What portfolios does the student need to prepare besides uh, latest results, slips, testimonials, and CCA transcripts? Okay, this is a very good question and an important question because for this exercise, a portfolio is very important. What makes up a portfolio? Well, a collection of creative work. At this stage, most of the students are involved in studying for exams and uh, doing work at their secondary schools. So essentially, the kind of portfolio that we're looking at is any creative work, anything that a student does as part of their um, uh, general activity. So, one of the things that you can do is take photographs. Everybody has a very good camera on their handphone. Sketches and drawings. Some students who have applied in the past have been really into uh, uh, illustrating characters for, say, for example, uh, anime, you know, people who are inspired or interested in anime. Um, and there are people who are very good and adept at art. Right, whether it's uh, you know craft-based art, making jewelry, uh, or even any sort of uh, uh, drawings and doodles, right? Every creative work can be part of a portfolio. Some have even gone to the extent of making little mini films, right? So there is a lot of possibility for you, and if you are interested in fashion. Not only must you show an interest in being part of the industry, you can show your taste by collecting different designs or trying to design your own uh, apparel. There's no harm in giving it a shot and putting it into a you know a portfolio, preferably something that uh, you know is um, in uh, illustrated form or pictures. Now, the other things are also important. Result slips from past years are important. Testimonials from teachers, always useful. And CCA transcript, because all of these show that you are an active, engaged, hardworking student, right? Especially if a teacher was, is willing to endorse you. Very often, people ask, what about work that I do for my art project or DNT? Yes, you can include those too. In fact, it's a good idea to include some digital elements from uh, projects that you are doing, say, for example, for DNT. And we understand the school is quite strict about showing uh, the final work that you are doing for DNT, but you can show the work that you've done uh, in the previous year. Okay, so a portfolio is very important. It's not just finished work. Work which is also in progress is also desired because it shows your willingness to be iterative, right? To change, to grow. I hope I've answered that question. Let's take uh, another question. What is the percentage of EAE intake compared to JE for digital film and television? Okay, well, for all the diplomas in the School of Design, uh, 
up to 50% of the intake is EAE. That's a huge and very generous number of people, right? So assuming that we have an intake of uh, 50 students, say for example, for apparel design, 25 students potentially can come in through the EAE process, right? So going through the interview, sharing your portfolio, gives you an opportunity to actually come into the school using the EAE process. But remember, you must still meet the minimum entry requirement uh, at the O-level exam, right? This is a very critical and important step that you must remember. Once you have been offered a place, that's the time you really must put in your effort and make sure that you meet our minimum entry requirement. Let me take another question. How many drawings are we supposed to prepare for EAE? How much time do you have? Uh, essentially, not to uh, put too fine a point on it, um, as much as you can. And I said before that it's not just finished work that counts. Sometimes the work that is in progress is just as important. But uh, the important thing is to be able to, to talk about your work, right? So you, if you produce a drawing or a mood board or you know a, a collection of style um, uh, um, outfits or something like that, be uh, uh, willing to talk about what motivated you, what inspired you to actually produce that particular piece of work, right? Next question. Is there a dress code? I'm very happy to say that we don't have a uniform. But of course, we do have a dress code which involves, you know, dressing decently and, you know, reflecting the good values of our school. I think I'll leave it at that. Let's see, what other questions can I take? Do students from different design specializations have opportunities to work together? Um, yes, as I've mentioned, there are many opportunities to work together with students from other courses. For example, uh, the uh, Beyond Design Center is actually our center where we uh, undertake collaborative projects. And very often, industry will approach us to actually undertake a project which involves a broad range of skills. So you might find yourself working um, you know, as a product designer, alongside somebody who has uh, graphics or branding uh, knowledge as well. And some of the multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary experiences that we offer include uh, such projects which are, you know, based on real world problems. So yes, there is a, a great opportunity for you to uh, work in an interdisciplinary fashion. Let me take another question. What kind of questions will be asked during an interview? That's a very good question. Um, essentially, we are interested in you as a person. We're looking at uh, your motivations, what drives you, what makes you passionate about design. Very often, students have a rough idea about what design is, so it's important to prepare yourself by doing your own research, right? Go to our website, find out more about the courses that we have on offer and what is uh, the skill, expertise, or learning that you will undertake. Having done that, widen your uh, research a little bit and find out what are people doing, not just in Singapore, but all over the world in the field of design. There are some new and exciting things and be prepared to talk about them at the interview. This is important because it tells us about your commitment to actually following through on the program. Very often, people have an idea of uh, their capability, that they are, you know, roughly creative. They're probably the art teacher or somebody says to them, you know, you're very creative, you're uh, very uh, good at problem solving, you should consider design. Uh, but you have to do your homework. You have to know what design is 
and be prepared to speak about it. Let's take another question. Are students required to take part, take art or DNT as an O level subject to be accepted into design school? Well, I'm happy to say we have taken students from a broad range of uh, um, disciplines from secondary schools and elsewhere. In fact, uh, we have students who come with double signs and no art and no DNT. So uh, don't worry. If you don't have art or DNT as part of your O level suite of subjects, the important thing is to come prepared for the interview and show your willingness to learn, right? Because that's what we're looking for. Next question What are the school hours? Is it long? Uh, I guess this is a question that a lot of parents want to know because. Uh, I guess it's uh, one of those things. In preparation for a career, our work actually mirrors what the industry requires. So there is a lot of hard work. Very often, we encourage students to have a balanced life, but the hours can be long. But one of the things that you learn being a, a school of design student is how to manage your time. Because like we said, it's not just about the learning, it's also about the interaction. And some of this interaction can be really informal and quite fun. But a lot of the learning happens in the classroom. So the classroom hours are timetabled and quite manageable. How much work and effort you put in on the homework or uh, assigned work that you have, including meeting up with group mates and all that, really depends on you and how you're man uh, able to manage your time. Some people have very effective group work sessions and are able to do the work very quickly. Right? So no worries. All of this is part of the experience of being designed in design school. And by the end of the three years, you will learn how to manage your time better. Related to this, there is a question on what time classes start and end. Okay, officially, our classes start at 9 a.m. Although there are some subjects that uh, students have to do uh, as part of TP Fundamentals, which is a different suite of subjects, which is common to all students in TP. Um, some of these start at 8.30. But generally, we start at 9 a.m. every morning, right? And we take punctuality seriously. Even during the pandemic, when you log on, right? Of course, there's a digital, digital rec record of when you log on. And we start the class promptly at uh, 9 a.m. What time do, does it end? Well, it can go on. Classes can go on until 6 p.m., right? We generally don't have classes at night unless there are some special enrichment programs or workshops. So you can actually safely say classes are nine to six. What, okay, another question. What do they look out for during the interview and aptitude test? Okay, I'll start with the aptitude test first. The aptitude test is actually a very basic uh, observation and response test. So there'll be a series of activities, most of it visual, which you're supposed to respond to. Of course, there's a time limit, but it's reasonably generous in terms of time for you to respond in a creative, innovative, and interesting way, right? Um, in terms of... Um, uh, in, um, the other part of the question was, you know, in terms of the actual interview itself, um, it's basic questions about your character, your personality, and uh, things that you feel, um, you know, you want to share about the activities that you do as part of a, uh, a student and being a creative person. Let's take another question. Other than sample works in the portfolio, must we include certification as well? Okay, 
um, certification is useful, especially if they are in software or digital things that you have done in secondary school. It's fine, you know, to bring them along. But um, I guess the more important thing is actually the portfolio. I mean, to return to the conversation that uh, you are likely to have as part of this interview session, right? It's really more about the work that you have been doing and would like to do in future, right? So the certification and all that, they're really about tools that you're likely to use in your design career. They're important, but we also teach you some of these skills uh, over the three years. So no worries about that, okay? Um, how many drawings do you need to submit? Can I put it in a PowerPoint or video to show all my artworks and handicraft? I'm super keen to join Diploma and Apparel uh, and Merchandising. Oh, that's really good to hear. Okay, so I think you're going to be working hard to prepare your portfolio. Yes, you can use a PowerPoint. You can bring along your computer with you and show from the computer the work that you've been doing. Uh, from your question, it seems like you have quite a bit of creative work to show, right? Think about how you want to present your work. Think about the order. Of course, the most important thing is what you are most proud of at, at the beginning. And also show, like I said, some of the works that you are working on or which are in progress to show your development, right? So not just the nice, clean, finished work, although that's much appreciated, but also work in progress helps in having a conversation about your interests and your desire in apparel uh, design. Let's take another question. During the EAE submission process, where do we submit our portfolio and what format must it be in? PDF, can we submit more than one file? Okay, so essentially what we're looking at is for you to turn up at the interview with a computer and to be able to show us your portfolio from there, right? Um, some people bring their iPads, some people bring handphones and show us their work on their handphone as well. So it re we don't really insist on any format, okay? Um, it's good to actually have a printed copy of some of the work because essentially you will be interviewed by a panel of two to three people, right? And in order for all of them to have something to look at, sometimes, you know, if you're sh showing it from a small screen like a handphone or something like that, it's not really effective. And of course, being prepared, if let's say you're not able to show your video or whatever it is that you produce for your portfolio, sometimes, you know, having a printed copy of it is a lifesaver. And this has happened, you know, many times in the past. So be prepared for, you know, certain problems. If let's say you can't get your PowerPoint going or you can't download at that moment from uh, Google Drive or something. These are the problems that occur at every uh, interview session. So I think always save it on your desktop and work from there. For the interview for apparel design, will it be online and in a group? Okay, that's a very interesting question. Uh, currently, our interviews are online because of the uh, current pandemic situation. So we don't really know what will be the situation going forward. Normally, before pandemic, we do face-to-face -face interviews. Uh, but we are more than happy and prepared to do online interviews, right? So be prepared uh, for online interviews. I always tell students, find a nice quiet place for the interview, right? If you have a noisy sibling or, you know, a construction work going on in the background, I think you really do need to find a place where you can present yourself in the best possible light, okay? Because it is an important opportunity and uh, the time, you know, that you have, you want to make the best of it, yeah? Another question. 
which app do you use for interviews? Okay, so uh, we use MS Teams, but we also use Zoom, right? So uh, really, uh, we will tell you in advance which platform we are going to be contacting you on if we are still at the phase of uh, online meetings for these interviews. Another question, is it okay if interest in the arts was only cultivated during the recent holidays? Absolutely. A lot of people are still making up their minds about what they want to do after their O-levels. So if you have been, you know, kind of suddenly uh, alerted to the possibility of working in the design industry, yes. Uh, but of course, come with work you know put in some effort to put together a portfolio now remember i i've i've said portfolio includes illustrations drawings photographs video anything that shows your creativity your interest your uh effort at being a, a problem solver but um if you have a very short period of time just keep in mind that Taking photographs is one way of showing uh, your interest and capability in look, looking at things from an aesthetic point of view and your taste. Uh, so, yes, you have to work pretty hard uh, during this holidays if you want to come for the interview and put together something that will encourage us to have a meaningful conversation on what you think you're passionate about in design. Can we sh uh, share screen, share our screen, our portfolio if the interview is online? Absolutely, definitely. Uh, we are digitally prepared. We've been teaching online for the last two years. And I quite humbly say that we are quite digitally savvy. How long will the interview take? Um, well, be prepared for an interview of about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, it's not very uh, um, taxing because it is a conversation, but you must prepare to allocate some time to do the aptitude test as well, right? So about 15 to 20 minutes, and if we're really enjoying the conversation with you, sometimes it can go on for a bit longer. And uh, just to put a, a little bit of a finer point on that, if the conversation is very short, it doesn't mean you're not selected, right? If the conversation is very long, doesn't mean we're, you know, uh, not sure about taking you on board. None of these things matter. We've had students who, after five to ten minutes, we know from their work, what they show, how they speak, that they are right for the school and right for the industry, right? But there are students also who we have to coax out ideas and get them to speak because maybe the portfolio is very good, but they're a little bit uncomfortable about speaking about it, right? So sometimes it takes a little bit longer. It, it is not significant. The amount of time that you spend in the interview does not indicate whether you are successful or unsuccessful. Let me take another question. Are interviews in groups... No, currently we don't practice group interviews, although uh, there has been uh, some uh, effort in the past to actually do group style interviews, but currently we are doing uh, online um, face to uh, sorry online interviews uh, with individuals. Let's take another question. Do I have an unfair advantage if I don't have good grades in the past year. I don't know if that's an unfair advantage, but uh, if you think it's a disadvantage to have poor grades, let me assure you that the EAE is not only about grades. Like I said before, uh, at the O level, it's about meeting the minimum entry requirement, right? But we're looking at you holistically. We're looking at you as a person, your passions, your interests, and uh, what you think you'll be capable of doing in the industry. Remember, doing a diploma is about going to work. Yes, many students go on to do further education, 
but we're preparing you for the world of work. And it's not always that a person does well in secondary school, right? Um, we've had many students who are late bloomers who find their way, find their feet when they are here in design school, right? So it's a place to develop yourself. So don't worry about your grades if you have not done really well in the past. Yeah? Let's see now. Is there any other question I can I haven't already answered? Will my portfolio need to be ready by the time of application or by the interview? Uh, essentially, your uh, portfolio needs to be ready by the interview. Right? So get started working on it. Um, I think the main thing is to tell a story with your portfolio. That story is about who you are and your creative journey as well as your interests. Um, let's take another question. Okay, let's take the last question. I think we're coming to the end. We will answer some of your... Oh, okay. Do, I think there are no more questions, actually. So, uh, just uh, to end off this session, right? Um, I hope you found today's sharing informative and useful, right? What we need you to do is actually go to this site and share your feedback, right? It will be really helpful to us whether the session was useful and we really want to improve. So it's a, a, a cycle of continuously improving how we do these webinars so that we are able to answer your questions effectively. So it would really help if you actually scan the QR code or went to the site and actually shared your feedback with us. It's really important, right? So I'll just leave this on for a few seconds. Okay, so we've come to the end of today's session. I really hope you have found today's uh, sharing informative and useful. Uh, there are many avenues for you to actually reach out to us. And here are some of the... Uh, digital ways in which you can reach us on social media and so on and so forth. If you want to have a little bit more of insight into uh, joining us at the School of Design at the Masek Polytechnic. Thank you very much and we look forward to seeing you soon. Keep well and stay safe. I'm signing off here from all of us. Goodbye.